Welcome back to Generative Design in Grasshopper. I am continuing with this series that's online about studying the Chrysler Tower and taking this script to a whole new level. What I've done here is put in a little Wickerson Jazz up here in the Grasshopper node, and I will. Uh, it's taken me several iterations uh, to basically uh, advance what I was doing. Um, but one the one warning I want to give is uh, let me let me pop that in there. Uh, add to group um, is if you're going to do anything uh, and you're going to start with some chaos at the beginning, you might want to return it on different stages to what the basic script was. So what I've done here is uh, tucked in this little blue Wickerson Studios Jazz, which is simple, uh, you know, primary grasshopper type stuff. But in doing so, uh, it, you've you've made it work with a generative model in thousands and thousands of iterations. So um, make sure that's working first uh, uh, when you advance the other script. Now, what happens in this series is they end up going, and I still want you to watch it. It is basically uh, let me pull it up here. Generative design. It is this class. I'll bring it down. You're going to want to watch it at the one to six level. Um, and this is basically part two that they've gone through and made this single uh, shadow study on this park and building. Uh, they've, they've gone in advanced that so you actually can work with. And right from the beginning, you'll see here, uh, you can work with a cross-reference series, which all of a sudden gets you working up in the you know, 52,000 model study range, which is absolutely amazing. The sorting stays the same. There's a little bit of information on taking some flattens off. You have to really watch the details of that. They take out the extrusion. They make a real switch over to fast generating a mesh model. And the other thing they do to it to speed it up an awful lot uh, is, okay, there was an interesting pattern of concatenation and joining uh, to shrink the file size, which was really amazing technique. I never would have thought of going in here and using a hyphen and takes number and translate it into a text just so I could call information to get rid of uh, uh, setting a, a, a total square area, area of a minimum maximum. And it brings down the count, if you take a look at it, uh, from 6,500 units, brings down the count in this case down to uh, 1,413. And then after I do the heights, uh, the data with the heights with nine in each, obviously we're only processing 157 branches. Uh, that along with cleaning tree to get rid of the nulls speeds this right up and takes it through a mesh box in a matter of 30 milliseconds, which is insane because before it was like a minute uh, between iterations on extrusion and cap. So watch that in full detail. Then after that, there's the fast process of uh, gaining the area again um, and studying that, going through the sun path the same way uh, there was a very interesting cleaning of tree. If you take a look at this and you look at your numbers, 000, and then there's a digit, and but it moves up to, if you look down near the bottom, at, at uh, it says 001, all the way up to 00156, the count. Basically, by using the path mapper and going in here, it was really nice magic. Uh, they, they simply uh, set a null math path mapper and then remove the D. So remove those indices, or what I refer to as indices on the end. So you're really only analyzing the first three paths, A, B, C. And in doing so, you can uh, split this into the groups that you need and take that through the uh, shadow analysis, which gets you all these wonderful different shadows. They still keep this uh, weaving in so in case something doesn't show up on the surface of the of the park or the building uh, it still reads as zero and doesn't bug out your program and then it ends with the surface grid choosing how many you want to set it to they do a four by five to bring it up and you can run this as high as you want well within reason and then they set a really nice 3d text tag at the end which labels all of this and we're preparing for now uh, sorting, filtering, and analysis on that to find out which one you want. Now, all I did is go through that video, learn, and keep up with it. You will learn the basics of generative modeling in the example of the Chrysler Tower. When you do that, you should be very capable of going back to how you like to interrupt scripts and put in your own magic. And I call it with this in Studio Jazz. I grab a geometry and I simplify it. The reason I simplify it was the geometry came out looked pretty wild in its paths. I mean, you can see, well, actually not so wild, but it has this zero at the end of it. And it's got a zero path that I didn't want. Um, so I just removed it down to the A path. Uh, so in doing so, by simplification, that allows me to be able to flip the matrix. And if I can flip the matrix, now I can start dealing with units 
of the nine columns. And in getting the nine columns and finding their length, I do a simple range pi rotation. But I also, the axis I bring in as well. And although I could make this a little boring, and you'll see how this jumps it up. What I have to do at the end is reflip it back to the data structure that was there before, plug it into uh, the geo. And this is where I think you might be interested in the generator of design in Facebook and what I'm doing. Look at this building. Now, it totally took on different characteristics. It's not straight up. It's not boring from the top. Look at the, stati look at the study shadows of how interesting they are. Now, I don't know if you can build a building on an angle, but for me to be optimizing and using generative art to find different areas because of this script, uh, my initial stages were like putting in a rotation, say, in the Y direction. Um, and I didn't mean to do that. That's going to mess it up. Oh, my God. I meant to go here and go direction here. Um, and... Uh, and my initial point was the one here. So I was going from my point to the line. Oh, let me just go back a second and see what I just did. Uh, I just made it very funky. Uh, let me put it back to where it was. The A line. Let's give it a second to... Yeah, it was the point. It was this line that I was doing. But my initial stages were to bypass that line and just put it in and uh, push it off in a direction for the uh, y direction. It was kind of boring. I mean, it just kind of kept it in the same spot. It didn't do any funky rotations. And obviously picking uh, X, Z doesn't do anything because of the orientation of the model. It just pushes it in the other direction. A little more of a twist, a little more of an interesting little play. But what was really nice is when I realized if I could just take the point and C and use that as my um, grafted, uh, not grafted, but my uh, data tree of dimensional lines, you start to get this total kind of cool twisting and bending and different ones kind of strutting out from itself. Like, why would you build a building that this you know, tightrope walk across here? But the sole point is with getting into the habit of nestling in your own funky jazz to customize your own scripts and make sure they still work. Now, you're processing in the end of this. You're still looking into 1,443, uh, 13 columns and processing them all differently and running the data metrics on each one, that each one of these is different. And uh, that that's very exciting to me. And, and what I would warn against is if you start to do this and it goes well here, make sure it kind of advances in a very simple fashion. Um, you don't want to go in and, uh, and get too much jazz going and then be like, oh my gosh. So let's just take a look at this model from the top. I think that is kind of fun. Uh, the text tags are there to be printed. The object, the shadows are here. The objects are here. I'm just going to do a quick bake on the objects, and I'm not going to group them. But there you go. Pretty interesting little model. So let's put that back over into uh, all views, and there's our rendered model over in perspective. And we'll just have a little fun here and take a look at what it looks like over in pen and ink. Kind of nice little studies of these little uh, broccoli or celery stacks. <laughs> And I think uh, I'm going to actually try a technical view here and see if I actually like it. Eh, it's not bad. Um, and you can bake the other data as well. The scripts are getting long, uh, not so much longer, but I'm packing more in with these blue kind of jazzy function areas. And wherever they do really nice, smart work, like over here where they actually use that concatenation and turning a text to a string and back to a text again, and this idea of understanding path mapper better, I put it in there, and I think there were some really nice fixes here on the first video. Uh, really exciting stuff. I hope you guys are enjoying it. It's generative design for uh, Grasshopper, and hopefully I can make it a little more interesting and crazy than what you normally would have seen uh, to learn the basics. Now, of course, you don't want to advance too fast uh, because you can get lost. I don't know how much you can think ahead. There are some geniuses out there that seem to really understand it, but I like this kind of um, twisted, torqued uh, model. Uh, for analysis that I can actually still continue to think about. So thanks again for watching Wickerson Studios Generative Design for Grass in Grasshopper.